So what's up, what's up? What button is over, y'all? Um, let's get into it, guys. Sheesh, you know, as soon as I cut the, um, start recording a flash, I'm trying to get in my car. Alright, uh, close the door. Alright, guys, let's get into it, man. Today we're going to be talking about a couple, um, a couple of scriptures, and, um, this is just, you know, a warning for, you know, the things that, that will be happening. And, um, you know, everything that's in the Bible is true. You know, and this is God speaking to his children. And, of course, anyone who has an ear to listen, you know, anyone who takes heed. So, you know, everyone isn't seeking God's face right now. Excuse me. But even the ones that are seeking God's face, you know, a lot of people are going through it. Um, it seems like we're being dragged through the mud by the enemy. You know, God doesn't want us to panic or, you know, lose our faith. You know, that's right, what's going on. You know, we have our times where we, you know, we feel overwhelmed. But, um, you know, you just gotta, you know, you gotta sit down and just allow God to um, just rest on you. You just gotta allow, you can speak to him. That's all I can say is talk to God. You know, I'm not coming from a position of, um, I am mighty and holier than thou, you know. Um, you know, I usually, um, um, I try to be systematic with the scriptures and be try to be, uh, Grammatical, grammatically correct, but all I can say, we just gotta come from a genuine, um, genuine uh, position to God because you know we nothing without God, and um, we just gotta be humble because you know the things that's gonna be go going on, transpiring in the earth, you're gonna need God as your number one, and um, you know we can't let pride get in the way, can't let pride get in the way, can't let um, arrogant, arrogantness and stubbornness get in the way. Um, I'm gonna, I was going to read um, Psalm 33, I was going to read Revelation 21, and um, Zechariah 14, and um, Second Chronicles, and I'm going to just go from there, all of these have something to do with um, each other, you know, these are all like if and or type of scriptures, like if we do this, this is what God will do, and if we do that, this is what God will allow, so um, you know, right now, every country is going through it, you know, you got a lot of people, um, running there like running from their their consequences and trust me i know how it feels because that first one happened to me um huh, i was trying to run you know it's really you, you can't run from god you can't like out move god from like catching you and putting you in a certain predicament so um you know we just got to repent and we got to just sit down and ask god to calm our mind down because uh you know god is in control of all things um I'm even in a I'm in I'm even in a setting in an environment where it's just, it's not right. And um I know I'm not the only one going through it. You know, you have some people that are um they're preachers, they're evangelists, they're not going through anything. They're not facing no like crazy trials. So I guess they you know, they might have got through their wilderness and some of us are still in the wilderness and some of our battles are more treacherous than others. But um, all through it all, we gotta just be thankful and glad that we, you know, we can wake up at each and every day. And um, we just gotta ask God to give us an ear to hear His voice because we gotta be able to hear His, his voice in these certain seasons. You know, it's for your own life and your own, um, for your own um, sake, and for the sake of the people around you, and even the people, um, you know, in your city, your state, and even your country. Cause just know, through you, God can make a difference if you allow Him to um, use you. But you have to be, you have to surrender, and you gotta um, invest your time and your energy in him. You can't, you know, because most of the time we put our own, uh, our own selfish desires before God. You know, half of us do that our whole lives until calamity and destruction comes. And God told us in the Bible, it say, do not be afraid when a calamity of, of the wicked come to pass. And this reason why it says wicked men, you know, wicked, when wickedness is done, you know, which we all did wicked. Don't think I'm exempt. You're not exempt. We all did wickedness, and it's brought calamity. And you can see the state of the world that it's in now. It's because of wickedness, you know. So, um, you know, it's to the point you, you, we're gonna have to get our anointing oil. If you're not into that stuff, you're gonna get your anointing oil. You're gonna have to learn how to uh, bless your oil and bless uh, your water. You know, you're gonna want to be sprinkling your house wherever you you, you, you stay. You're gonna want to anoint your home, pray over your, over your home. You're gonna have to pray when you leave. 
out the, before you leave the house, pray before you go to sleep more than ever if you aren't doing that now. Um, and of course, you're going to have to get a uh, consistent worship life. God wants to worship him with our, with, um, with our spirit and truth. He told us to worship him in spirit and truth. So we have to worship him with a whole heart. And, um, and the type of persons that God likes to use are people that's broken. You know, that's who a person, that's the type of people God can use, a broken person. Because when a person is broken, they, more, they most likely see God more than anything. They, they didn't they didn't try it at all. They didn't did all other ways to, you know, try to bring ease to their heart and their soul. But you can't feel no void with no drugs, no sex. And um, some people have never, they went off the limbs. They, they allowed the demons to, you know, influence them to start murdering people killing people, raping people, because, you know, insanity, that spirit of insanity can come creep in, you know, through trauma. It's a demon, really, you know. Through trauma, that's how demons access men and women and get them to um, start doing demonic things, you know. And uh, even if you're not traumatized, you could be broken. You could start doing things that, you know, that's not godly. And that's what the enemy wants you to do, you know. So with that being said, let's get into it. Psalm 33. So let's go to Psalm 33. And before I um, start, you know I'm gonna pray. I definitely wanna pray before we um before we start. But just know when you pray along with me, just know it, it's doing wonders. Don't ever think when people don't pray the same prayer together, or whenever you pray that it's not. God, angels hear it, especially if it's according to the Word of God. Remember that when I, when it, when you pray along with um the Bible and it's and it's something that did do with the state that we're in. Angels definitely hearken, hearken to your voice. Um, your prayers, I mean. So Psalm 33, verse 16. And it says, and at the top it says, praise for God's goodness. It says, praise for. It says, for them. That's the main word, for. Don't you know you work for something? Praise for God's goodness. So, you know, a lot of us are going to have to humble ourselves and praise Him through thick and thin, through bad and good. Even when things are going bad, praise him. And even when things, and when things, when he bless you, praise him. So um, let's do it. Let's start with fourteen. No, thirteen. It said, "The Lord looketh from the heaven; he beholdeth all the sons of men." And before we start, let's pray. Um, because I want him to. We always want to welcome God in the midst, and you know, in your space, whatever you're doing. So we don't want to be doing things in our own strength and our own. We don't want to speak out of the flesh. That's the last thing we want to do. So, Lord God, we um we just want to come to you with thanksgiving in our heart. We bless you. We thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us this far, Jesus. Um, we ask you to come, give us a spirit of comfort and uh, peace, peace of mind for all those that are going through stress, distress, um, turmoil, betrayal, whatever the case may be. We ask that you um, come to the aid, Father God, for you said um. Those that fit the Lord, you encamp with around them. So we ask that you encamp around every man and woman, every child, every household that are um, in distress or going through pain. And we pray according to um, anyone going through any type of revelation of Joseph when uh, in Genesis 37 where their own family is turning against them, Lord God, we ask that you intervene on their behalf and bring them above whatever the enemy is trying to do. We ask that you intervene on any family member that's being manipulated from any principality, any power. Lord, let those powers be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you honor. We give you glory. Take over this um, this atmosphere. Take over this over me. For you say you when we when we um, drink the blood, we you enter us. So Lord God, enter me in the name of Jesus. Walk through us and speak through us. And we come against every demonic interference with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So let's go. So the song it says says um. 12. It says, blessed is now. Look, 12. It just keeps speaking to me. God keeps getting me go up because, you know, you can't say one scripture without saying the next one. It's like if you start at the bottom of a scripture, it just it just doesn't sound right. So every scripture that starts before the last, it always just compliments it. So if you go to, um, let's go to 10. It says, the Lord bring it to counsel of the heathen to not. He make it the device of the people of none effect. So, you know, um, with everything going on, just know the devil, he's trying to have his way. Um, against the people He's trying to have his way Against the mind and soul So every man Boy He doesn't care the age He wants to take a person's soul You know And, and this generation In this generation now the, the wickedness is 
is being made manifest at an early age. So, you know, even the children, you know, they're murdering people. So that's how you know this world. We're in the end times. We're in the last days. And those that have an ear, let them hear. You know, that's what God said. Those that have an ear, let them hear. And um, it says, uh, um, the Lord bring it to the, the, the counsel of the heathen to not. And it says, uh, he make it a device of the people. And then, in fact, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. So it's written. This is fact. I mean, there's no other word that can overpower God's word. No devil, no evil prophecy can overpower God's word. Remember that. You know, the enemy might try. His agents might try to, um, you know, override his word or his, what he said is going to happen. That's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to override everything God said that will happen and what we're here to do for his children. So, you know, he wants to snatch the promises out of your, your soul. He, God wants you to believe these promises. Me too. So don't think one for one second the enemy is not going to try me, you, whoever you know, or people all over the earth. To make them think that um you know he's gonna give us a land that flows with milk and the milk with milk and honey, so that's a promise right there. He said if we observe, observe him, if we diligently seek his face, and observe and observe to do all his commandments, he will give us a land that flow. He will bring us to a land that flows with uh, milk and honey. So I'm tongue tied. I got a, like a lazy tongue, so you know I get uh, tongue tied. So so just know the counsel of the Lord stands forever. It will stand forever. It would never um fail. And those, and any other thing, any wicked counsel, those are the things that will fall. And it says, uh, the thoughts of his heart to our generation. So it stands forever in the thoughts of his heart to our generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And all, it says, and the people whom he has chosen for his his own inheritance. So he has a chosen people for his own inheritance. So the Lord looketh from heaven. So the Lord looketh from the heavens. He beholdeth all the sons of men. For in the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of earth so we it's a, we are the inhabitants of the earth and he is the inhabitants of the heaven of the heavens so he's looking down on us from he's looking at the evil and the good his eyes are on all things and as uh, he fashioned their hearts so like he considered all their works so he fashioned the, he fashions all our hearts so like that's what he will do and so he considered all their works so he considers all the works there's no king saved by the multitude of their hosts so he's saying there's no king saved by the multitude of other men as only can be saved by God. So in these last days, you're going to have men that are leaning on their own flesh. They're leaning, putting their trust in men and women. God said, curses anyone who put their trust in a man. It says, a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. So a mighty man is not going to be delivered by his own strength. Like I said, God is the ultimate. He's the ruler. And you cannot overcome the devil without the Lord. You can't overcome anything without the Lord. And these men that are, you know, they're leaning on their own. They're going to be leaning on their own riches. They're going to be leaning on their own spirituality. Anything, anything that's not of God that these people lean on is going to fail. It's going to destroy them. It says, uh, so these things will be made. The proof of these things are going to be made manifest in nations. And I'm going to get to that. And um, it says, and all the horse. It says, and in horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. So he said, even a horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver. Neither any man shall deliver him. They live themselves by by their great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. So the eyes of the Lord are going to be upon those that fear him in whatever state, whatever country, whatever nation. So we have to hold on to these things, that his eyes are upon those that fear him, his children. And that means, you know, he's going to keep watch um, on things that might be trying to come against you, whether spiritual or physical. He's going to divert things on your behalf. He's going to frustrate the enemy. He's going to hold them back. But you have to have a prayer life and you have to listen to what he wants you to do and yeah we're here to build a kingdom we can't be um in these last days when wickedness is uh increasing he doesn't want us to you know um hide in the corner of our house and think we're gonna be safe hiding in the corner you know god sent out to fear other gods and he said that in uh isaiah you no know, jeremiah I believe jeremiah uh 13 he said do not fear their gods fear fear, fear the lord only i think it's jeremiah 13 16 do not fear their other, the gods that they serve. You know, so, you know, Satan is going to use people that he, uh, you know, uh, it's going to use these people that serve other gods to, you know, try to destroy and the children of God because the spirit in them is being used. For, what is it? The spirit in them is being used against the children of God. So, you know, that's going to be nationwide. It's going to be countrywide, but God is not going to allow them to exact upon 
uh, and overcome the children of God. And it says, and even for, if you read Psalms 89, it says that about King David, about, 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 about um, the humble servant David. And he said, uh, I might read that to you. So it says, uh, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to, to deliver their soul from death. So the Lord is going to deliver our soul from death. So you even pray, Father God, deliver the souls of your children from death, whatever country, whatever state. Put them all in the sea. And um, it says, uh, because we are trusted in his holy name. Lord, Father God, may you give your, your, your children the unction to function in trusting in you, Lord God, and even, even us, even me, and even our family members, home and abroad, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Father God, may you give supernatural boldness, courage, for you said to fear not, fear, you said not to be dismayed, be strong and of good courage. And you said that in Joshua 1. And uh, let's just let it, let that mercy, O Lord, be be um, be upon us according as we hope in Thee. So, Lord God, we ask that You have mercy upon us, upon every child, every family, Lord, according as we hope for us. So, Lord God, help us never to lose hope in You, Lord God. We um we ask You to fight on our behalf, on behalf of every country um, that's going through some type of um, epidemic, uh, and it seems it's global. Um, so we just ask that You intervene in Jesus' name. So let's go to. Uh, we're gonna go to um, Revelations. Let's go to Re Revelations. And now, just remember, I said, "Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord." So the Lord said, "Whoever in the nation that blesses Him and who serves Him, those are the nations that won't be destroyed." So Revelations 21, and that's what God says. Let's go to Revelation 21. Amen. God is good all the time. He is good all the time. He's good through the bad, and He's good through the um good. He's great, merciful, full of grace. So Revelation 21, verse 23. Wow, this is going to amaze you right here. And I pray God gives you comfort in me just reading this to you. So verse 23 and 21, it says this. Let's go to 22. It says, And I saw no temple there, man, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So the temple of the Lord. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So they are the temple. And it says, And the city had no, just like us, we don't have to go to church to be in the temple. We are the temple. You know you ever heard that He said you don't need to go to church to be in church You are the church yeah, you've had, you, you, have, you have church in your apartment Fellowship with him, sing to him, pray to him uh, Worship him uh, Read the Bible, that's your church right there Read, um, watch some sermons You're in church right there So in these last days as um, real, real teachings and preachings You know, it decrease He wants us to be able to have our own church And be able to you know, decipher from What's real and what's true and what's alive from the pit of hell, even if it's coming from a preacher. So you know, Satan comes in the form of light. So we're gonna have to test the spirits behind preachers, and we're gonna have to fill ourselves. We're gonna show ourselves approval. We're gonna, yeah, he already said he went to be approved by you know by the studying of, of the word, and that's how we make it in heaven. So um, I'm gonna continue. It says uh, they were the light of it. They they are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun. Neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God delight in it, and the lambs to light thereof. So he's saying these nations they will not need they will not need any sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it for the glory of God. So the, the glory of God will be the light of these nations. And it says, uh in the lambs to light thereof, and the nations of them which are saved, remember, the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth the kings of the earth do bring that glory and honor. To. So, you know, we're kings and queens. God made us kings and queens. So those that are, you know, his children that are, you know, that worship God, that fear him, we will bring the Lord's glory and honor into these nations. And it will be signs and wonders. It will follow, follow his children. And it says, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. So the gates, when he's talking about gates, the gates of heaven, it shall not be shut. You know, just like here, the gates of hell. And, we, and most of us, when we think about hell, we think about under our feet. Literally, a lot of people don't know. It's gates, the gates are above your head. It's in the heaven. That's why I said spiritual wickedness in higher places. Spiritual wickedness. So the heavens and, the, and hell are in the higher places. You have the, um, hell is the second level. And you know, the heavens, of course, is the, the, the high, the seventh one. I can believe the seventh uh, heaven is the, that's when God honors you and gives you a crown. You just did a lot. And God is proud of you. And um, I'm not going to try to remember the, all the specifics. I don't want to sound like I make myself a fool. So it says, um, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring their glory and honor unto the nations. Of the nations. And it says this, And there shall in no wise enter to anything that defileth neither whatsoever work of the abomination or maketh a lie. 
but they which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, if you want to know what the abominations are, it says that right here. If you go to Revelation 21, still, verse uh, 8, these are the abominations that Lord, the Lord is talking about. It said, but the fearful, those that are living in fear, those that live in fear is an abomination to the Lord. If you, if you allow the enemy to put fear in you, that will make you almost like an antichrist. Even a, even doubt. He said those that doubt will have like you're almost an antichrist. And that's what the enemy wants you to be doubtful. And that's what it says unbelieving. So those that are unbelieving, they will inhabit the spirit of an antichrist. So we don't wanna we don't wanna be a part of that. It says the fearful and the unbelieving. So you have believers that, that believe in God, but the enemy might be influencing the living fear. And you gotta not be afraid. Like I said, the Lord said, "Not." He said, "Allow him to be your fear. Allow him to be your dread." That's in the Bible. Allow him to be your fear. Allow him to be your dread. He said, "Not to fear, but they fear." You know, the people that um, worship other gods, they live in fear. You know, if they live in fear, they, they're going to be doing all type of things in fear. So they're abominating. What they're doing is abomination. It says, uh, "Unbelievers and abomin and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers, murderers." God, of course, He said, "Thou shalt not kill." That you're not still. Not saying he won't forgive you, but if you if, if a continuous murderer, that's an abomination. You know, uh, we had people that, that that were in a war and they killed someone. They they didn't ask for that. Uh, you had some people that killed somebody in self defense. They didn't ask for that either. Um, you had some people that may have uh, killed someone being influenced by the spirit of anger and wrath because you know they might have had a bad day and they might have been going through trauma losing family members and so on the devil used someone to push them to the edge he might have killed someone and they repented god said to repent turn away allow him to make you over um ask him to cleanse you with the precious blood of jesus from the top of your head to the soles of your feet and ask him to give you a clean heart renew your mind give you a new spirit and you know when you turn away he will it'll be like you're fresh on a fresh start even if you're not a virgin and it even tells you about it in Revelation that his children are like virgins. They, they they speak no God. So when he makes you over, you're like a virgin. It's a clean slate. God doesn't go around. Remember, he doesn't bring up. He's not going to bring up what you used to do. If you don't do it, you you, 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 um, you molested someone. Or you uh, you um, you fondled on that lady in class when you shouldn't. You know, you felt bad. You got, you took your punishment. Move on. Don't allow that enemy to put um, condemnation. That self. Don't self condemn yourself. That's an enemy. That's a trap for the enemy to torment your mind. So it says a sorcerers. That's a whoremongers and sorcerers, witchcraft and idolaters. And idolatry is anything you put before God. You, know, you can put money before God. You can put having power before God. You can put sex as idolatry, pornography, whatever it is, and even marijuana. And I used to do that. I used to worship weed. I used to, have to I used to smoke every two hours, and I, I always was trying to smoke. Man, yeah, and I feel good. It was my, it was like my God. So anything that you put, you, you use as as your your peace, your fun. That's if you make that's your your, your, your to go to for everything. And most people, the whole world is using marijuana. That's a trick from the pit of hell to deceive people into the pits. And this is these type of messages for those that are living in sin. God, Jesus didn't come down for those who are, you know, living righteous. He came here for the um, people who are, you know, in darkness, living in the dark. Those that are bound by Satan. And I'm going, I'm some of my, some of the things that I'm going through, it feels like I'm bound. But just know God said uh, those that suffer or, uh, you know, endure suffering, the, they, the Lord shall reign with them. If you endure suffering like Jesus did, he will reign with them. And he said, the Lord said, if you deny him, he would deny you. So the enemy wants you to deny God through your trials and tribulations, through your your, your, your your wilderness, through that season of uh, dryness, that dry season, that season where nothing is going your way, no matter how hard you pray, or no matter what you try to do, it seems like nothing is going through. So you got to just stay connected to God, stay anchored. And um, God said, blessed are those that trust in the Lord. Blessed are those that wait upon the Lord. And you got to hope in his mercy. He said, blessed are those that um, hope in his mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall uh, obtain mercy. Blessed are for those that um, hunger for righteousness. And um, hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So if, you, if that's what you're seeking, he will he will fill you. And um, God already said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find it. Knock and the door shall be opened. So, um, so uh, let me continue. Says idolaters and all liars. So liars, 
those are, are constant lies, demonic lies. I would call it demonic lies. That's a you know the Satan is alive. So anyone that uh, that is alive, you know, they, they take the trace of a devil. And God wants people not to lie. You know, you can ask for for repentance. And if you have a problem with lying, ask God to deliver you from that spirit of of, of lie of a liar. And um, it says they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And uh, and then, let's just do this. Look at this. And it says, if you go over to the next one, it says, and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows, four of the seven plagues, the last plagues. So these last plagues have to come um, come to pass before, you know, Yahweh comes back. Yahshua, Mashiach, in Jesus' name, amen. It says, uh, and talk with me, saying, come hither. I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit of a great and high mountain. Shew me that great city, holy Jerusalem. Descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone and clear crystal. So um, it's going to be, it's going to, God's city is going to descend from the heavens. It's going to descend. It's going to take over this earth. And um, just know, um, those that are armed with God, they will be taken away. They will not be able to, um, you know, enter into the gate, into the gate of the Holy Jerusalem. And um, those that won't be able, they will be left behind. They will be left behind and to, you know, go through the great tribulation and even um, the gates of hell. No one must um, experience that at all. So with that being said, let's go to the next scripture. As if you go to Zechariah 14. And this is what some of the things that God is saying that he will do to those who come against him and his children that fight against him. So just know God is, um, he's the man of war and he fights on our behalf. Even when you don't even know him, he's protecting you from things that you don't see. If we knew, if we knew the depths of the things that were against you, you probably, we wouldn't be able to go to sleep. Literally, we wouldn't even be able to go to sleep. That's how serious it is. Um... So you guys might be able to find it. Zechariah 14. So just read Zechariah, Zechariah 14, 10 to 20 until I get there. Uh, I might not be able to find this Bible that I'm using. It's like, uh, it's terrible. It's terrible. So you can read it yourself. Just read. Look at the things he's telling you though, that is going to happen. Ridiculous. This Bible I'm using is so barred up on the corners. You know, when, you, when your Bible is curled up on the corners of the Bible, that's how you know you constantly use the Bible. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah, look at this thing. So, these are the type of things you don't want to go through. Like, how I can't find it, this is the type of things you don't want to go through in front of a large crowd of people. So, good thing I'm only making this on a video. Amen. But it says something about those that fight against Jerusalem, the Lord will smite the heathen, you know, they're going to be wiped out. And actually, I think it's right after this, that guy. There we go, I found it. So we're going to Zechariah 14, thank you, Lord. So it says this, um, let's get a verse 11, saying, and men shall dwell in it. No, it says, and all the land shall be turned into plain from Gibbet to Remen, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and, and inhabited. In a place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate. These are gates, gates of heaven. Gates, not regular gates, not no physical gates. And it says, unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel unto the king's wild crosses. And it says, and men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. All this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. So their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Now, you see how serious that is? It says all those that fight against Jerusalem, it says their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. That almost sounds like they're melting. They're gonna be melted. And no who wants to who wants to go through that? So this is God warning. And it's written it's right here, you know, and the enemy is totally influenced and bewitched people to, you know, still fight against God's word and, and his children. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great torment, saying that tongue shall consume away in the mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great torment from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. So this brother and brother, neighbor and neighbor shall rise up against each other. So, and Judah shall also fight at Jerusalem, 
in the wealth of all. The heathen run about should be gathered. So the Lord is gonna, you know, deliver Judah and Jerusalem. This is uh and the wealth of all the heathen run about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. So he's gonna that's what it said, uh that's why remember what it said, it's gonna give us a land that floors with milk and honey. You know, the devil's trying to fight against that. It's like, no. I'm gonna scatter all your children. I'm gonna make sure that they come with me. Said, and so shall be the plague of the horse of the mule, so the animal. So God is gonna even plague the animals. So in these last days, you know, we're gonna it's, it's gonna be a famine. You know, people are gonna be not be able to have any access to you know cows, and chicken, and turkeys and things like that because their nation might be plagued with horse plagues and the horse and the mule and the camel and of the ass, the donkey, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents and this as this plague. So um. You guys, I forgot which scripture, but it's about a seven-year famine, and that was dealing with Joseph and um, Pharaoh, and um, I think that's in the Bible. Of, uh, I forgot. Um, Genesis 37 and Genesis 50, and um, let's continue. It says, uh, and, uh, and it says, and it shall come to pass that everyone on the, on, on the one left is the left of all the nations which came came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year. So these nations that they will came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king. The Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of the tabernacles, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all these families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So the Lord is going to take away rain. And you, you see how hot the sun is getting, right? Uh, if anyone is keeping up what's going on in these revelations, uh, people are being scorched by the sun. They're dying. These countries are dying. People in these countries are, are being heated to death by the heat, heat waves. And this is God speaking to us. We gotta ask for His mercy. We gotta pray. Um, it says this: uh, those that don't come out, they, if they don't come to worship the King, the Lord hosts to keep the feast of the tabernacles. And it shall be so that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord hosts, even upon us shall be no rain. And the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain. That should be the plague wherewith, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen. That come not up to, to keep the feast. Those that those that don't don't keep the feast of the tabernacles, and this, and this shall be the punishment of Egypt, the Egyptians, just like the Egyptians were, you know, drowned in the Red Sea, coming against the children of Israel. These people are the same today. The Egyptians that are um, today, they will they will be punished. It said this should be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations. All nations be the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. And it says it, and that they shall. There be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar, before the Lord's altar. It says, "Yeah, and every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness, and unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and see them therein. In that day, there shall be no more the Canaan Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So he's gonna take out the cancer. There should be no more Canaanite in the, in the house of the Lord of hosts." And with that being said, let's go to the um next. If you go to Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, um, Second Chronicles chapter seven. And you're gonna have a lot of prophets in the, in these last days giving false dreams, false uh, false signs, false hope, and telling lies, opposite, speaking from divination. And God always says he's gonna recompense those type of people that speak against what he, what, they're going to be like, thus said the Lord, and when God did not say those things. Um, this description in the Bible saying, um, these prophets had made my, 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 my children sad, and I didn't make them sad, because they're telling lies. The enemy is using them to tell them lies, so it's like they're chasing, they, they're looking up to a false dream that these prophet, um, prophets are speaking over them. And God said not to put trust in man. It's not, it's okay to watch a prophetic, um, video, but don't be going around, be, don't be gullible and chasing everything of um, a prophet. I'm saying we're going to have to, you know, rely on God. Sit down and just know when you read these the scriptures and, you know, if you are able to pick up on the things that's going around and if you see the revelation happen before you, that's what it is. And God maybe wants you to, he might be um, exposing certain things to you so you can warn, like you said, uh, said the, the warn the wicked and then we're watching it. So if he made you a watchman, if God has made you a watchman, you know, you are responsible. You're obligated to pray over your city, your community, over your family. You might be the generational curse breaker. 
you might be the one that makes a difference in your state. And, you know, speak the word to your friends and to other people so you can save them from their demise and their destruction. And if they don't hear, God said, uh, let the just be just and let the unjust be just. Let the filthy be filthy. We gotta just go on going to the next. We can't force anyone to hear the word of God and to take heed. You know, it took me 20, 25 plus years for me to, you know, turn away from my own ways and my own, um, you know, so, you know, just trying to do anything, wasting time. So, uh, Second Chronicles 7, and I'm in Chronicles now. Okay, verse, four, verse 14. And it says this right here. And it says God's resting place. So we want to be in, we want to rest, we want to be resting God in his presence. And the main, the one way, the most important way to get God's presence around you is to worship him, to just worship him. I mean, just, or just, just the word just. And I had to learn this. We had to shut off all our, our needs and all our cares and wants. You know, so everything might not be going well. You might have needs and wants. You might want God to do this. You might want God to do that. He knows what we want and need. But it comes a time he just wants you to just worship him for because he doesn't want to just hear you. I want this. I want that. Sit. You gotta sit yourself in a in a, in a, in a certain position and just worship him. That's what he wants. We worship the Lord because he's woken us up this morning. He's allowed you to see another day. Uh, he didn't allow you to die in sleep. Worship him. Thank him. Bless him. Um, you're not on the street. You got shoes on your feet. Worship him. You know he's he's working on your behalf when you worship him. Little do we know, he's doing things we don't. We can't even fathom. And, uh, even when I'm I, I'm getting attacked by the enemy or being going through some type of trial, I just want to be like I just want to keep dumping my my prayer on him over and over. Not saying that's not that's what he wants you to do, but worship the Lord, worship the Lord wholeheartedly. And uh, verse fourteen says uh thirteen it says this: If I shut up the heavens, there be no rain; or if I command the locusts to devour the land; or if I send pestilence among my people. It says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, if we if we seek him, if we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will hear their land. So, you know, he's going to heal the lands from being desolate. You know, you, you already heard about the rivers in, uh, was in Jerusalem. Okay? And this, the, the river's drying up, so that's his doing. He's allowing that to happen because man is doing wicked and they're not seeking him and uh it says this my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and then what i hear from them and i will forgive their sins and i will hear their land now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place for now i have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever so his name whatever nation that meant said that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So his eyes and ears will be upon those nations that serve him perpetually. His eyes and his ears will be attentive. And, so, and, and as for thee, thou, if thou wilt walk before me as David, King David, thy father, walk and do according to all that I have commanded, commanded thee, and thou shalt observe my statutes and, and my judgment. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David, thy father, saying, that shall not fail thee, a man to be a ruler in Israel. So he would say he would make you a ruler. He make his children rulers if we uh, humble ourselves, stand from our wicked ways, observe his statutes, his judgments. Then he would establish the throne of thy kingdom according as it says, I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee as a man to be ruler in Israel. And one more. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Amen. God is good. Um, you know, when we say like, before I made this video, before I started praying, and before I started making this video, you know, I was kind of overwhelmed. So that's what happens when we when we don't imagine. If you just pray for two minutes. It's like the peace of God comes over you. And one thing that that really stood out for me, what God showed me when He revealed to me, when you're obedient and you and you do what He's telling you in your in your in, in your head, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, do what I told you to do. Keep doing it, and I will keep giving you peace. <laughs> And I'll keep fighting for you. Amen. Seriously. Uh, so Proverbs 14. 
5 verse 14 verse 34 and it says this now let's start let's go this let's go to 31 this only makes sense 29 sorry he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding but he that is hasty of the spirit exalteth folly so those that are slow to wrath have great understanding so but he that is hasty of the spirit exalted folly so those that are hasty to you know lash out you know wanting to hurt someone you know, we don't want to have those straight. We don't want to be influenced by those spirits, the spirit of anger and wrath and hatred. You know, we cast those spirits out in the name of Jesus. We come we come against every spirit of wrath and anger right now. We bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. For God already said, if you read Matthew 7, 8, 9, he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. No, sorry, that's the wrong scripture. It's a revelation spirit. But he said this, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. So we bind every spirit of hatred. In the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit of wrath. In the name of Jesus, so these demons want to influence you. They want to enter you. They either, either can enter you through sins, you know, through dabbling in the occult, sexual immorality, uh, being a liar, um, thinking evil thoughts of people. These are the ways that these can enter you, and they can even enter you or influence you from the outside to do things. Um, so let's um, continue. It says this. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy, the envy, envy, that's a dangerous spirit. And we know, we all know about Genesis 4, when Cain slew his, um, his brother, he slew his brother in the field. So that spirit is wicked. And though that spirit can get people, your own cousin to kill you. So you got to come against that spirit of Cain and envy. It's serious. That's how serious it is. It says uh, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. So a sound heart will give you life to your flesh. So when you you know you envy, you got you're living in unforgiveness, fear. It will rot your skin, your bones. It is bad. For, it will bring turmoil to your body. Literally, it says this. Uh, but envy, envy the rottiness of the bones. And say he that oppresses the poor reproacheth his maker. So those that oppress the poor reproach his maker. You gonna be know who our maker is. It said, but he that honoreth him had the mercy on the poor. So God said, I have mercy on the poor. Then that that but the poor is not doing nothing to you. The Lord honors those that have mercy on the poor. It says, and the wicked is driven away in the in his wickedness. So the wicked will be driven away. The wicked, the Lord will scatter the wickedness out. So, but the righteous have hope in his death. Amen. The righteous have hope in his death. Jesus Christ's death. We believe that he is he was resurrected and when we die and when he comes we we will be resurrected with him we will resurrect us from the grave you have people that's in the grave they're, they're no longer here when god comes they will be resurrected they will meet him in um in the air and um it says this it says this wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding but that which is in the midst of the fools is made known it says wisdom rests in the heart of him that hath understanding. So that's what we need to ask God to um, increase the, the 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 understanding of our spirits to be able to understand some of these scriptures. Some scriptures are more deeper than others. And uh, sometimes when you read the scripture, you like you scratch it, like I don't understand this. There's too many words that that's in it with it. Th and different parables, parables. Those were the, those were ways of God being able to you know speak to his children, and that the enemy won't be like I don't understand this. <laughs> but we had to ask for understanding, and as you ask and as you grow in and in, in mature in the spirit, you will get, um, open the eyes of your heart and your spirit. Understanding, it says, uh, it says, righteousness exalted a nation. Like I said, if, if righteousness, if righteousness exalts a nation, that means the nation will be preserved. It will be blessed. But sin is a reproach to any people. So if, if a nation is not honoring God and serving God, you know, floods will happen, earthquakes will happen. People get scorched to death. Um, earthquakes. These are the ways of God um, speaking to people. Um, just know it's not His doing. So half of these is, is the devil. This is uh, this is that's him taking his hand off the nation, or that country, or that state, and allowing the devil to do what he wants, to manipulate and to destroy. So Satan is always looking for a chance to destroy. If he could, he would burn this whole earth already, literally. It says, uh, it says, the king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. So the king's favor is toward a wise servant. A servant. If we're wise, if we're wise, king, the Lord God Almighty, he will have favor upon us. 
And it says, but his wrath is against him that caused sin. So God's wrath will be against those that cause shame to their brother, to their neighbor. The Lord already said to honor thy father, thy mother, and he already said to, um, to love, thy, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbors as you love your family members. You know, we don't want to be looking down at others because they got a different color than us or they come from a different tribe. Remember, remember it's 12 tribes that, you know, the 144,000. So it's going to be 12,000 out of every tribe. 12,000. And one of the tribes, Ephraim, Judah, Israel, um, uh, Jerusalem, different tribes. There's more than tribes. There's more. And I don't want to get the line of trying to remember all the tribes. So, um, I think that's all I have for you guys today. And these are the things that, that will come to pass. And um, this is just a warning to those who have an ear. You know, God wants us to seek his face, look at him, and him only. So, uh, I ended off with a prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you. I give you honor, honor, and glory. Lord, give us a spirit of charity. Help us to be, have a given, given spirit, not to be selfish, not to be stubborn. Lord, deliver us from any spirit of pride, arrogance, and stubbornness. Lord God, do what only you can do. And not, not us. We can't do anything in our own strength. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by your spirit. So we bless you. We thank you, Lord. Cover us. Lord, cover our family throughout the day and throughout the night. In Jesus' name, Lord, give us supernatural strength. Father God, may you quicken our mortal bodies. For you said the spirit that raises Jesus Christ on the third day will quicken our mortal bodies. So Father God, quicken us from any sickness, and any disease, any torments of the mind. Quicken us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, we speak healing. And Lord, we prophesy. You said that prophesy just as you told uh, Elijah. Uh, to speak to these dry bones and prophets Ezekiel, you told them to prophesy to the wind and breathe into these slain. So, Lord God, and every person for the east and the west to the north to the south, Lord, let your fresh wind of life enter into the bones, the body of your children. And Lord, every every spiritually dead person, Lord, we speak like that. Let the winds of life be blown in every state in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit take over in Jesus' name. Let your spirit blow a wind of fresh revival fresh winds of, 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 of peace. Lord, let the winds blow from the east. Fresh winds to the west, to the north, to the south. Fresh winds of joy. Fresh winds of, of, of peace, joy, healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, blow into the into the sick people in every hospital in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We seal and soak that in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we decree and we declare that all things are working together for our good. For those who love the Lord according to who are called to his purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, we decree and we decree in the name of Jesus Christ that it is well, that it is well, that it is well, and it is so. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And if this goes for me as well. God doesn't want us to go back. He wants us to keep going forward, not to go back to our old self, not to go back to that, that old crowd, to that old lifestyle, and to seek his face always. And um, that's what I have. I decree. I, it is well with you. It's well with me. Despite our suffering, despite of our afflictions, because the Lord said, many other afflictions are the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. In Jesus' name, God bless. Peace.